Welcome, everybody, to another edition of Talking with Heroes talk show program. I am Bob Calvert, your host, and uh, this is www.talkingwithheroes.com and our online news site. You should check it just about daily if you can. Thank you for your service. Us. Uh, we post stories from the troops overseas, around the country, uh, from veterans, uh, all issues related to our troops, veterans, and families, and Gold Star families, the wounded. Um, it loaded with unbelievable stories. They just keep coming in every day. We're here in Washington, D.C. still. Uh, those of you who've been watching the YouTube clips, you know we were with the American Legion. Amazing, amazing stories. If you haven't seen that, go to the YouTube page right where you're watching this video. And you'll, you'll hear from veterans going all the way back to World War II and uh, doing all of them, doing shout-outs to our troops. And uh, also behind the camera, is a 23-year Air Force veteran, G. Mark LaFrancis. Uh, he was on some of those videos. He's saluting from behind the camera. <laughs> and uh, we are teaming up now. Interesting story. I find out there's a lot of people that have been watching our videos from Iraq and Afghanistan for a long time. Well, Mark is one of them. He said, he, when he contacted me, he said, I've been watching your videos for three years, and I want to help. And that was about a year ago. So now we're teaming up. That's how things work like that. It's called networking. But I also want to thank, before we get started here in this next segment, oh, by the way, and if you haven't seen the Chamber of Commerce interview we did with uh, uh, Andrew Kovalson and uh, Ross Cohen, you've got to watch that. They are launching a major campaign across the country to help our veterans find good jobs. There's all kinds of businesses right now that want to hire them, and you'll hear about that. And, uh, but I also want to thank the people that made it possible for me to make the trip here. Uh, Andrew Koval Kovalson who you'll hear on the video, and my good friend in Colorado, uh, Colin Clark, uh, has a company, greenoxpallets.com. You really want to check that out. Uh, amazing product they're launching actually around the world. And uh, so, well, we're here with a gentleman that contacted me just not too long ago, I believe on LinkedIn, was it? That's right. Right, we're getting a lot of good contacts on that, mostly veterans. Uh, Grant Moon, and you are a veteran, so what I'd like you to do is uh, – Introduce yourself, tell the listeners a little bit about yourself and, uh, and uh, a little bit about your military career. Sure thing. Uh, thanks, Bob, for this opportunity and Mark as well for, uh, for filming here. Uh, and uh, thank you all for watching. Uh, my name is Grant Moon and uh, I am a veteran, as Bob has mentioned. Uh, started my service in 1998. Uh, feels like an eternity ago, but uh, to all of you watching, uh, the, the time goes by very quickly. So. Uh, cherish it, and uh, eventually, if you have under the years of service that I do, you'll be in my position. Uh, if you have over, you know exactly what I'm talking about. Uh, but I started my career in 1998 as a military policeman, and uh, at the time went to my uh, AIT and basic training in Fort McClellan, Alabama, and uh, had a wonderful time, came out with, as a military policeman uh, in the Massachusetts Army National Guard where I served for four years at that point and uh, uh, got to do some great, cool things. Uh, in 2001, I was selected for Officer Candidate School, State Officer Candidate School, and uh, I attended that, uh, which I found was a great opportunity for especially somebody that had no college uh, and didn't have the means to go to college. I was very appreciative that uh, the military provided me, at least with the discipline, uh, to get get myself where I needed to be and uh, and attend college and, and and get myself well positioned for the future, uh, so I I did officer candidate school and graduated uh, in 2002 uh, distinguished graduate and also got an award from the Association of the United States Army for leadership uh, and started my career as an infantry officer, uh, which uh, I I still uh, occupy today. Um, and uh, so did that as a rifle platoon leader, uh, did a stint as executive officer, uh, got to go to uh, Hurricane Katrina as a platoon leader, which was uh, one of the most uh, fascinating uh, experiences that I've ever had in my life uh, and, and also most rewarding. And uh, then in 2007, uh, while I was attending my, my graduate's program, I was, uh, I was pulled uh, to go with the 181st Infantry to uh, Iraq uh, and was in Baghdad, Iraq, 
specifically, many of you might know Camp Cropper, uh, performed detainee operations, base defense, uh, also did some stints on a multinational review committee, uh, did some stints with uh, doing personal security details, uh, escorting, uh, also some additional uh, accompanying multinational forces uh, to garner the tactics, techniques, and procedures that were being used uh, throughout the region. Uh, so it was, uh, it, was a, it was a great experience, and I uh, absolutely loved every second of it. And, um, you know, I, I know that uh, after serving in that area, uh, that, that there's been a lot of for, uh, troops that have not been as fortunate as I was uh, and, and were able to come back, um, you know, as, as uh, easily as I did. And uh, I, I appreciate everything that, that, our, that our soldiers and troops are doing out there uh, and for this, this generation's and our past generation's as well. So are you now in the reserves? Are that's right. That's uh, I'm right now a company commander in uh, the 1st Army Division East, uh, headquarters company, um, and uh, we're a training support battalion. We assist uh, so assist train up uh, for soldiers that are deploying overseas, uh, in addition airmen uh, and Navy as well. And uh, we provide a lot of the uh, pre-deployment checklist type training that reservists require and um, and and that's been very rewarding as well yeah yeah it's uh, you know the the reserve forces I, I know that have and, and a lot of people of course uh, know this but it's it's been uh, almost not too much of a segment anymore of the overall armed forces it's it's almost been a, a very relied upon and integrated facet into our overall armed forces and strategy and even more so as uh, as we continue going forward with uh, the looming budget deficits I know that the overall uh, reserve component is going to play a critical portion uh, with 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 our nation's ability to to continue to sustain its defenses so talk about being mm -hmm. in the reserves because you're, sure. you're not full-time military now that's right which means you don't make as much money that's right so you have to have a job or a business somewhere sure, else, right? So sure. What are you doing now? Yeah, so uh, that that's right. Um, as as mentioned, you know, reservists is uh, typically a one week in a month, two weeks over the summer, unless you're mobilized to do anything else. Um, but in in the interim, my full time job is uh, I'm an entrepreneur. I started a company called VA Loan Captain. Uh, and what VA Loan Captain does is VA Loan Captain provides education for veterans and servicemen on using their VA home loan entitlements. Uh, and if you don't know, the, the VA, of course, uh, for any veteran is an uh, integral part of uh, their overall transition back into society and also having resources. Uh, and, and the VA home loan program offered by the VA is one of them. Uh, so what my company does is uh, it assists veterans with obtaining uh, their certificates of eligibility, assists them in educating whether home ownership is right for them. It also assists with refinancing to a lower rate for any uh, veteran that has an existing VA home loan program. Uh, but I guess the biggest thing with my product is that uh, we connect them with affiliate lenders that have signed our Veterans Guarantee Pledge that uh, ensures legal, ethical treatment, high service standards, uh, and competitive interest rates. Uh, and for every loan that closes, $200 is given to one of our partner veterans nonprofits of the Veterans Choice. I think that you know the, the law has not been enough to protect a lot of our, our veterans and servicemen out there. Uh, and for me to build a company that assists our veterans and also gives back to society is very important. Um, and the lenders that I work with are highly vetted, uh, and uh, I, I need this uh, Veterans Guarantee Pledge signed by the president of the bank where I, I specifically look that president uh, in the eye uh, and, and watch him sign the paper 
and uh, that to me gives a great deal of comfort. He has to obviously sit and, and uh, think about what he's signing there for a second and ensuring that he can cascade throughout his organization the same type of principles that he's signing for. So, <laughs> it's, uh, it's, it's relatively simple uh, and, and sweet. Uh, of course, it's, uh, I'm no attorney and we don't want to get uh, – there, there are laws out there. But basically what it is, and it's on my website on uh, www.valoancaptain.com, uh, it, it's a pledge that just goes by bullet point exactly what the president of my affiliate banks are signing up for when they go ahead and, and come onto my lender platform. And uh, just in short order, some of the, the big ones is, is fair, legal, ethical treatment. That, that's number one. Uh, high service standards, number two. Uh, veteran and serviceman is treated with the due respect by any uh, employee from the bank uh, deserved as, as a member of our service or, or uh, prior service. Um, and that uh, $200 uh, goes to a veteran nonprofit of choice and also that the rates are competitive uh, within the industry. Um, and to that as well, uh, they provide me or they provide my website with, uh, with those interest rates on a daily basis so that the veteran can see as well. And we do, uh, we do periodically go ahead and shop the interest rates against uh, various different banks within the industry and find that uh, on all occasions we have found that we are at least, uh, at least the same, uh, but in most occasions lower. Um, and uh, and that's that to me is what's important um, because uh, you know given our service given what we've done uh, I believe that there there is a need to have uh, you know some sort of uh, discounted uh, mortgage program in there um, especially with the uh, hardships that our community faces coming home uh, the unemployment rate. Uh, the various different costs associated with getting back on your feet, getting a job, reintegrating with your family, and so forth. So uh, to be able to lock in uh, a, a strong interest rate on what is probably for most Americans the biggest purchase of their life uh, could certainly go a long distance for, for the particular veteran on savings. So are your lenders mostly on the East Coast, or are they in other parts of the country? Yeah. Uh, all of my lenders on my platform are national uh, from a footprint perspective, but all of them have a community focus. Uh, none of them are uh, have a tarnished record with, uh, with the two, two lawsuits that I know of against veterans and servicemen. Um, so none of them have any of those legacy issues. They all have uh, good reputations within the business, and uh, that's that's the biggest thing for me, and uh, and that they have a, a national footprint as well, and of course that they're approved by the VA. And they're on your website. Yep. They're uh, they're on my website, uh, or they're on my platform. Okay. Uh, okay. But via my platform, that's how uh, that's how the veteran and serviceman connects through them, um, and. Uh, and yeah, so it's it's been great and uh, very interested in, in continuing going forward and being able to help as many veterans and servicemen as we can.